I'm going to create this amplifier model. Um, I did this one earlier and uh, we'll follow the same basic steps if I can remember them. I should say that my daughter just went to bed and she doesn't much feel like sleeping right now so she's singing to herself and kicking around and stuff and so she's okay my wife's up there but uh, I might have to interrupt this you never know in the meantime let's uh, let's give this thing a try um, it's sort of like um, it's a little bit modeled after a, a Fender um, I think it's a frontman frontman uh, amp but to me it's more like a sort of a cheap kind of plasticky amp that you would you'd have in, in your, one of your scenes all right a little bit of detail not too much but good practice for basic modeling all right so here we are in the startup scene for blender and uh, I've got my screencast keys on down here and I'm gonna switch over to cycles render and put on GPU compute I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time in this video to do any uh, sort of you know medium level texture or actually very basic texturing um, but we'll see so I'm gonna get rid of the light I'm gonna click on the camera and get rid of that and I'm gonna keep the cube I'll just bring it up to there all right so this is what we have so I'm going to go into edit mode all right chances are I'll be using my hotkey tab bringing up this pie menu which is available in file user preferences add-ons if you just search pie and there it is okay so I've gone into edit mode and I'm going to scale this in the Y S Y and pull it in until it's a bit thinner like that all right uh, A to D select and I'm going to go control R and bring in a an edge loop like that and I'm just I just left clicked and I can drag it up to that position there all right okay uh, in fact I might want to go a little bit higher than that just like that so I just selected it by going shift and alt and clicking on on it I'm gonna come over to edge selection but I'll probably be going control tab for to bring up the different selection modes which are still available down there I'm gonna click this front that should be the front number one right all right the front edge and I'm gonna pull it back so we angle this thing like that okay next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift alt and click that edge and that edge this edge and this edge and I'm going to bevel this so I'm so the beveling is going to occur from the origin this white circle here you'll see a dotted line to wherever I put my mouse so I'll put my mouse right there I'm going to go control B there's the dotted line I'm going to pull I'm not pressing any buttons I'm just pulling my mouse out like that maybe and I'm going to roll my mouse wheel up one two three four that's probably enough I'm going to left click to accept that and A to deselect I'm going to shift alt and click the top and the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bevel Control B, and I'm going to pull away, and I'm going to roll my mouse. One, two, three. That's probably good enough. Deselect and go back into Object Mode. So there, I'm using my tab, and my tab button to go into Edit and Object Mode. So there's, there's the amp right there. All right. <clears throat> the next thing we'll do is let's put on a subdivision surface. So hit the uh, wrench, Add Modifier subdivision surface of two and we'll get that effect uh, we'll do some more I'm not going to apply it we'll do some more with that in a bit let's go back into edit mode and let's select uh, this face and this face and I am going to um, press I inset I pull in just a little bit not too much just like that maybe and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna pull in now it's going to look kind of weird, and so we can go ahead and we can take that off for a second. I don't want to come in that much, just like that. <clears throat> Put the subdivision surface back on, deselect. <clears throat> to get rid of this, to get rid of this, I'm going to put in a couple of edge loops. So I'm going to go Control R, and I want a vertical one, and roll my mouse wheel up. So I get two left click and right click. And now I'm going to scale them in the X. I'm going to pull them apart in the X. So I'm going to go S, X, and pull away. And then I'll move both of them. I'm going to come very close to the edge. I don't have to be right at the edge. All right, I'll put another one up here. So I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up here. And I'm going to get a, a horizontal one. Left click, I can drag it up to near the top. 
and left click again and deselect. Do the same down at the bottom. Control R, pull down, left click and deselect. All right. We can try smoothing as well. Now this, I want to accentuate this this corner just a little little bit. So we'll go back into edit mode, and I'm going to bring in another a horizontal edge loop up to here, but not go too close. I can I can move these and another one up here and sort of a similar distance away, like that. And let's have a look at that, and then I can see that. Okay. Alrighty, so far so good. Now I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to select this face. And I think I'm going to select this face as well. And um, I think I will inset, hit I to inset, pull it in just a little bit. And I came in, that's fine. E to extrude, and I'm going to pull this back. Let's go ahead and take that off. Um, I want to put some speakers into this cabinet here. So we'll have a level that will come down to here and then it'll go in. And I'll put a, a, a grill in front of that. So that's that's going to be fine. Let's put this back on. <clears throat> and we'll do the same thing with edge loops. Control R. Two of them. Scale them in the X. Two around there. I'll put one up here. Try that. I might want to go up above that actually. We'll see, just see what it looks like. And down here. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Let's actually put one on the side though. Control R here and bring it towards the back. And I can put one and bring it towards the front. Not too far though. I want to keep some of these roundedness. All right, that's all right. Let's uh, let's save that. Let's go over to N and turn on ambient occlusion in shading and display. We'll get rid of the grid floor for now. We get a little bit of shading or sort of shadowy type effects now. Um, all right, let's build that grill. All right, let's uh, select this face and go shift S cursor to select it. And that's gonna bring the 3D cursor right to the center of this face. I can now deselect and go back to object mode. My 3D cursor will stay there. So I can bring in my next object uh, very right, right at that spot, uh, roughly where I'm gonna need it. So I'm gonna bring in a cube, shift A, mesh, cube. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna scale way, 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 way down. Let's hit the period key to zoom in and then zoom out a bit so we can see. To keep scaling. Let's pull this out a ways and let's scale this in the Y. Right, nice and thin like that. Let's scale it in the Z like that. Okay, good. And now we're going to scale in the X. Just pull out and keep going until it hits the sides. Just like that. Okay. Now let's have a look at that. Okay. I'm going to bring this uh, forward a little bit to close to the front, speakers will be in behind. Uh, let's do control A, rotation and scale, just in case it's necessary. Let's go into edit mode and edge selection and select this top edge and that top edge. And we'll do a small bevel, control B, pull away. I'm gonna put one edge in there so I can catch a little bit of light. All right, it's a slight, slight bit rounded. Not really, but all right. Let's uh, bring this up towards the top there. And um, let's go ahead and add an array, add modifier to array. Not in the X though, in the minus Z. So let's try minus two. And let's just increase the count all the way down. Let's see what that looks like. It's sort of an equal distance to top and bottom. That's probably gonna be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit apply and then set origin to geometry. That'll put my um, transform tool, I guess, right in the middle of that because I wanna copy this and uh, rotate it. So with it selected and go shift D, rotate Y 90 and that'll put it vertically. I'm gonna slide this over and I'm gonna zoom in 
so that the space here looks similar to these spaces. All right. This is the x direction, so I'm going to go g x, and I can move it again, and that's probably good enough. Okay. Um, it's not big enough to fit across, so I'm going to duplicate it. Shift D. I'm going to pull it across here till it's clear, and then I'm going to come in, and then I'm going to zoom in and look at these spaces. All right. Go X, and let's see if I can make these spaces look close. Let's try that. That's not bad. All right. So we got this one and this one. We'll join those and let's see if I can get the other one and this one control J will join everything together so that would be my grid I'm now going to go into edit mode and wireframe and vertex selection and I'm going to box select these top vertices and I'm going to pull them down until they're somewhat under there let's have a look and see if that uh, if that seemed to have worked and they're not visible now yeah, that seems I, I think it seemed to have worked yeah okay I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom go into edit mode wireframe deselect those and box select these ones and bring them up just like that and then for these ones on the side I'm just gonna start getting rid of them right from there B and grab all these ones X delete vertices and I'll get these ones down here that are left over X vertices let's go back out and have a look at this and see if I like it I'm not sure I'm crazy about this part there but I might be able to move it all over and I'm not sure I'll, you know, it'll matter let's try um, just sliding it over a little bit see if I can get it somewhat equal okay what about top and bottom yeah not bad not bad let's save that okay so we'd have that now I'm gonna go ahead and hide that my 3d cursor is still there I'm gonna make some rudimentary speakers very rudimentary shift a bring in a circle rotate x 90 scale so we'll have like a big one and maybe two small ones or something okay let's just go rotation and scale okay we'll go into edit mode F to make a face okay E will bring it up and um, okay let's select it all though control N my, do my polys the right way select this front face and I to inset and let's do that and then let's um, E to extrude pull it back and scale like that and then I to inset one more time and then E to extrude like this and I'll control B bevel this and I'll put a few I don't know how much of this is going to be visible let's select that face control B pull out roll my mouse up a couple times let's see what this looks like smoothed okay it does that if I can avoid um, a subdivision surface I, I would like to you know what in behind that grill it's gonna be barely visible I just want it visible like that but, however, I might want to bring it out more. I don't need anything on the back. And it really, there's not going to be any decent real shadows. So, let's just push that down a bit. So, let's go ahead and um, shift D to copy that. Bring it up. I'm just going to scale it in object mode. I don't care. And put one like there. That's definitely well I'm just gonna scale I'll get it as big as I can because it's not gonna be really visible let's go to three and wireframe and see how it lines up with the other one I think I'd like to have the face of it close to the same level as that one let's 
just go back to one. And I don't think I'm going to worry about mirroring this. I think I'm just going to pull it over. Like that. Let's just have a look at that. Now, it's possible I will extend the backs. Uh, let's bring that back. Just in case you were looking through the side and it looked like they were floating. You're just going to see a hint of them. Maybe they all need to come down, though. Well, you know, I could hide this. And I could join all these together. And go into edit mode and grab the backs of these. Actually, before I do, I'll do control A rotation of scale, just in case. Grab the backs of all of these. And hit the inset. And you do extrude, just pull them back like that. Oh God, that's got to hit. Well, how about we de delete the back faces? It's not going to matter, but... All right, let's uh, bring everything back. All right, just, just so that we know that that's there. Okay. Cool. All right, we got that in there. Let's go ahead and work on the handle at the top. Let's select the amp. And select that top face, shift S, cursor to select it to bring a 3D cursor right to there. And I think I'm debating that if I want to do a cylindrical, yeah, I might as well do a, a cylindrical one, a circular one, whatever. Let's look top down and uh, go shift A, bring in a circle, scale it down. Now that's not the actual center of the amp top. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the center of the amp. Let's do that. Let's scale that down a bit more. Let's do rotation and scale. Okay, go into edit mode and control uh, tab to see the vertices. Deselect. Let's box select all of these ones and hit delete vertices. So I've got these ones that are you know ready to go out horizontally. Let's go P to extrude and bring them out a bit. And then F to make a face, just like that. Select it all, F to make a face, and let's extrude it, E, and pull up like this. Make sure all the polys are facing the right way, and let's in edge selection, um, yeah, let's grab the top and the bottom. Not sure I need to do the bottom, control B, pull back. And we'll bevel that right there. I'll, I will put a subdivision surface on this, I think, because that's pretty sharp there. And hopefully, it won't be a problem. Let's grab this face. All right, that's better. And inset like that. Um, I might scale this in the Y a bit to make up a little bit for all the beveling till we hit the top and the bottom. All right, if it matters. To extrude, and let's push this in uh, just a little bit, doesn't have to go very far. Now, let's try that and let's try it's going to go weird subdivision surface there, like that. And now, let's come back in here and go control R, put an edge loop, and bring it very close to the end there. We'll do another one on this side, very close to the end there, and at the front. Uh, see if I think I can get two and scale these in the Y. I don't think I need to worry about having them straight or not. We'll do that. And th th some of this is not going to be very visible at all, but let's take that off for a moment so I can see. Control R, bring an edge loop there and up near the front. And let's uh, let's try it again. Okay. So you see, I did need these thicker, and that's probably okay. And I can do smoothing as well. the question of is that too big yeah it's fine it's all a design thing anyhow all right I got my 3d cursor right there so let's take this and let's go ahead and uh, mirror with respect to this and then I'll look at the positioning I think I want them farther away from each other so I'm going to select this one I'm just going to slide it out and do it like that and um, 
Yeah, that's probably going to be okay. Before I apply that mirror, though, uh, let's see if I can. Uh, that doesn't matter. Let's go Shift A mesh. Bring the circle again. Scale it down. And bring it over here. Put it roughly in the middle of this. Make a little bolt or something that holds this thing down. All right, zoom in with the period key. Scale a bit more. I'm applying scale so that when I look here, my scale is one. My manipulations will work better. And I guess it's the right thing to do. I have to make a face. E, let's bring it up just a little bit. And control B, I'm just gonna bevel just a little bit. One, two, like that. I'll come out, I'll push this down like that. I think this is too big. Let's uh, scale, but not in the Z. I don't wanna affect the height. Scale, shift, Z, let's do that. All right, let's uh, select this top face and go Shift S cursor to select it to bring the 3D cursor right to there so that I can bring in a cube. Oh boy. And uh, S to scale way, way, way down. Gonna make the little cross that would be in a screw of some sort. Uh, let's scale this in Y. It's a very small detail, so let's make it big enough. Let's scale this in the X as well. I don't need it to go right out. And just want to touch it in like that. Let's uh, shift D, rotate Z90 so I get another one. Ah, join them together. Ah, geez, I don't know if I should, should have done it that way. Control N to flip the polys. And hopefully that's going to be okay. You know. Push that in. Let's give it a try. I'm going to do a Boolean on this. Um, select this little screw, go add Boolean difference and the object with the eyedropper select that hit apply and hide that and I would I'll just get that all right it's very very not very visible at all uh, let's go alt H and uh, get rid of this and I can try smoothing if I maybe adjust this to let's try 45 now it looks and uh, I really didn't want to apply this. If I want to join it, I have to apply the subdivision surface. Um, for the moment, <clears throat> let's just select the amp again. Select this and mirror with respect to the amp, and then I'll put the other one there. The only thing about this is whether or not I want my screws in the exact same orientation. If I want to turn this a little bit, in which case I'd have to go into the mirror. Let's just, let's just leave that and see. <clears throat> okay, uh, the amp is, now let's select this. Um, I am going to go ahead and apply the mirror. Yeah, I, I, I thought I wouldn't because I thought I was going to join the screw, and I think maybe I will, in which case I could have just done, you know, I could have, um, oh, jeez. No, it doesn't matter at this point. Um, I could have just made one screw attached to this and mirrored this over and would have had both of them. But anyways, that's all fine. Let's just go apply that. And let's uh, set the origin of geometry. That'll put it right in between in the middle of this whole structure so that I can now bring in my next object, which I think will be a plane. All right. And, and it'll be right in the middle of those uh, that handle. Let's go into edit mode and scale this in the Y. And you'll start seeing, well, why didn't it come in right in the middle of the handle? Not happy about that. Let's try this again. I, I want to prove that this thing works. Well, maybe we'll select those. Origin to geometry. Maybe, ah, I didn't do cursor to select it. I just did origin to geometry. Fine. I could have selected the bolts or these. Either way, that would have been fine. That was just a bad example. <laughs> scale this in the Y and I think you can see now it's right in the middle and I want to get it a th the right thickness so that it looks like it fits in there all right and let's uh, scale this in the X so it's there and um, what are we gonna do I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do I'm gonna push it down to about there I need to extrude and pull it up as high as I can get it to give some thickness to this thing so, um, what do we want to do here? 
we want to create some indentations, like maybe two indentations. Let's try this. There, one, two edge loops. Let's scale them in the Y a little bit to about there. And then let's use the bevel tool, control B, to create a space. Okay, let's do that. And it's on the top and the bottom, that's fine. Let's hit uh, E to extrude and scale in the Z and pull in. Let's pull that in like that. Okay, and then let's bevel uh, some of these edges. I don't care about what's underneath, but at least that side edge. Well, those ones are big ones before I do the middle. So let's go Control B and pull away. And let's go one, two. And let's get all these sharp ones. That one, that one I'm holding uh, Shift and Alt. <clears throat> and I'll get those ones. Okay, and let's, uh, I'm going to bevel from the origin. Control B, there's the dotted line. Pull away. One, two. Ooh, how many did I do? One, two. I might be putting the subdivision surface on this anyhow. All right, I mean, I don't know. Let's let's just try smoothing. Well, that's not gonna work well yet. Um, let's try subdivision surface and see how much difference it makes. And smoothing. Oh, heck, we might as well use it. All right, but... Uh, <clears throat> let's hide that. And you can see what happens at the end. So let's go into ed in, into it and uh, put an edge loop there. Like that. And down here. I know this stuff isn't visible, but whatever. Oops. Got to be on the screen. Let's uh, Alt-H to bring that stuff back. Do I need to go inside there? I don't think I need to. I want to. Does it fit? Yeah, it looks like it fits. Right size, or do I want it a bit smaller? I'm just going to scale it in object mode, scale it in the Y, just like that. Okay, a bit of space, and yeah, that's probably okay. All right, let's leave that for now. <clears throat> for now, for now, let's do the feet, select the bottom. Face selection, Shift S, cursor selected, <clears throat> and let's bring in a um, let's bring a cylinder. I know 32 sides seems a lot, but I'm not going to sub D this for sure, for sure. Scale it down in object mode. That's okay. Now we'll have relatively big feet. Seven is the top. Control seven is the bottom. By the way, I do see I've got some streaking here so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna select the bottom face and I'm gonna hit I to inset just like that and I assume that it's on the top as well I believe it is let's hit seven see it there all right so go in select that face I to inset that's really all you have to do as long as you don't move it and you know bring it down right all right so we're gonna have this and uh, let's pull this out and see how long it is Okay, let's go into edit mode and scale in the Z. And I'm going to grab this bottom face here. And I'm just going to hit S and scale in like that. And I suppose I could bevel. Just a tiny bit. Bring that up to the contacts. Or if you really want to, go in. Take that face and delete it. If that's your kind of thing. We should be but like that smooth that'd be my foot there so control seven uh shift s cursor selected to the amp is selected there's my foot and mirror with respect to the amp apply and then just shift d and copy this down here get it as it roughly equal as i can um Okay, so we got this one's and this one, control J. Is that everybody? Yes. And we can put the origin of geometry, so I'll put it right in the middle.
And so those are the feet. <clears throat> and that's all the semi-easy stuff. So now what we're going to do is the other stuff. All right, so I'm going to go back into the amp. <clears throat> and, 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 and. I might want to move, shift alt and click that edge. I might want to move that whole edge down a bit. I want to try doing that. I can't just pull it down in the Z or whatever. Like I'll show you, right? That's going to screw that all up. Let me try going GG and sliding it down, edge slide. I'm just going to accept that, but I want to look at this. I think this is going to be too sharp, so I don't think I'm going to be doing this. Well, it's not bothering me so far. Let's deselect that. Maybe I am going to do it. The reason I wanted to do that is because this whole area is the area where I'm going to have the volume knobs and the inputs and stuff like that. And I want to take that piece uh, to another layer and work on that. And I wanted it to be big enough, relatively big, so that not too much of the body cabinet is left over after I build this stuff. Because this stuff will probably shrink up and not take up that much room. And I don't want too much here to look weird. Um, let me come back to the image here. Like this. All right. I, I want to minimize how much I have here. I also want to minimize how much space I have here. And that's not very easy. I didn't find it very easy to do. This is a little bit awkward to, to create, sort of. It's not bad, but all right. So I've done that, and I, hopefully that was a smart thing to do. What I'm going to do now is I am going to go Shift D to duplicate that and P to make it a new, its own object. So there it is. I'm going to set origin to geometry. Did I do it? Set origin to geometry. Yes, I did. And I think for the moment, I'm going to take off the subdivision surface. And I'm going to go M to move, and I'm going to move it right here. All right, so I still have the original one there, but I have a copy right there. And I'm going to look in front view, and there it is without the subdivision surface on for the time being. I want to look in the side view because I think the easiest thing for me to do is I want to use this as a template um, and I want to rotate this and see how vertical I can get this. So I'm going to go RX and I'm just going, I just need a general idea of the size. All right, and there it is, and that's good enough. Now, with that there and my 3D cursor right here, all right, that's totally fine. I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, and I'm going to bring in a plane, Rotate X90. All right, and go into edit mode, and I'm going to scale in the Z, and I'm going to essentially try to match this up reasonably closely. All right, just like that. Scale in the X. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's that's not bad. Move this down here now, and come on, into object mode and set origin of geometry, and even shift S cursor to select it. So everything's all set up on this. The only difference is the position, uh, which is hard to do here. I'm going to move this in space to here. Move it back a little bit. Good enough. Okay, that doesn't matter very much at all. Let's do Shift S cursor to select it again. All right, so this is a good template to use. I'm going to go ahead and hide that one. I might be just deleting that one very soon. And this is what I'm going to use to start building this stuff right here. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is go into edit mode, and it is already selected. And I think I'm going to hit I to inset, and I'm going to pull in, and I'm going to get something like this. And I'm just looking that they're basically even on all sides, and that's fine. All righty. Now, um, the thing is now, I want to create these um, partial vertical lines. And those lines sort of set up spaces, areas on this face here. So they're sort of a mid-size space, mid-size space, and then smaller, 
smaller, and then bigger, okay, for these inputs and the power and light and, and the switch and stuff like that. So I'm going to go mid-size, mid-size, small, small. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bring in three edge loops, and I'm just going to bring them in anywhere roughly for now. So I'm going to go Control-R, I'm going to bring it in around there. But you'll notice that it's, it's bent like that. So I'm going to go SX0 just to straighten it. I'm not going to worry about where it goes. Bring in another one. SX0. All right. Another one. SX0. And one more. SX0. Okay. Deselect. All right. Now, let's see if we can use these grid lines. So what I'm seeing here, actually, if I shift and alt and click that, if I move that to there, uh, whether that's big enough, I get one, two, three spaces and, and like a quarter kind of. What if I did that again? So we one, two, three, and like a quarter. And I just drag this away. Um, so mid-size, mid-size. Now, these ones are, are smaller spaces after that. So what if I did two and and that amount two and three quarters kind of let's see if I can emulate that here two and three quarters and then that space okay I think I'm gonna go a little bit a little bit more here how about sort of two so the uh, three or whatever that amount so I need a full space and three quarters on that side, three quarters on that side. So that's a, well, I'm just getting complicated here. Is it? Or is it just me? How about I go to here? Is that where I was a minute ago? Two and three quarters, two and three quarters. That's, that's almost okay. That's all right. All right, let's go with that. Let's uh, shift alt and click all of these. I'm going to bevel to make spaces like I did before. So I'm just going to go control B and I'm going to pull back to make a bar like thing like that. And I'm going to deselect and then I'm going to bring in an edge loop and I'm going to put it here and I'm going to slide it up a little ways. And now in face selection, I can remove a bunch of polys and leave just the bars and the outline. And make sure I'm clicking the right thing, right? Leave these bars, get rid of all this X faces like that. Now, let's go into edge selection. That leaves a bunch of edges that are serving no purpose now. So you can select them and go X, dissolve edges. And I'm gonna go clean this up now. Oops, that one, X, dissolve edges. Let's come over here, this one. Dissolve edges, I didn't keep those. And this one, dissolve edges, good. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back into object mode and let's apply a subdivision surface. And oh boy, it looks like some pumpkin. Pumpkin smile, all right, that's okay. Let's go in, it's gonna take a bit of cleanup. Control R, slide an edge loop down to about there and to about there. Similar size on both sides, spaces on each side. You don't have to get it tight, tight. In fact, I want some curvature in this, a little bit of curvature, anyhow. Maybe like that. Okay, let's go all around the sides for the time being. Control R, bring it over to there. And there. There. And there. Now, let's do this part. Control R. Bring it to around there and there. Let's try that. I didn't do anything about this. Do I really want to? You know what? I might do that. That part's going to be covered anyhow, but it might clean it up. 
can like behave better. Okay, so I'm looking at that. I can tighten this up if I want to, but the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add solidify. And I'm going to increase the thickness a little bit like that. Okay. Now we're not done. It doesn't look very rounded, but it'll it'll round up in a bit when I apply that. I just want to look at this. That's fine. I don't mind a little bit of this kind of roundness. I was hoping for that. So let's select it and go ahead and hit apply. All right, and that's that's what happens there. Okay, I can add smoothing. And that's that front grill like thing. Okay. Now I'm not worrying about the back and, and other edge loops. I mean I could try if, if I really wanted to, I could I could try to put one in. Maybe that would flatten that. Let's, let me just see if I how much roundness I lose if I do this. Just right there. Like that. Yeah, I could live with that. Okay, let's see. Okay, front view still. Okay, so far so good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to build some volume knobs. So Shift A, add a circle, rotate X90, scale, and let's go ahead and position this roughly where it would be, you know, pretty close to there anyhow. And then try to imagine the ones there. I think that would be all right. I'm going to go Control A. Actually, let's have a look at this N. You see my scale here? I'm going to go Control A, rotation and scale, and it goes back to 1. That's really what I want. All right, so let's go into edit mode. Make sure that is selected. I have to make a face. E to extrude, pull it up. And let's go. Um, let's go what? Scale, like that. No, not yet. Let's do another one. E bring it up scale it in that's better like that I might want to scale it a bit more need to extrude bring it up like this and before we go any further let's select it all and control N to flip polys let's go like that and then in face selection let's select that face I to inset and bring it in to about there E to extrude, bring it down, and let's hit S to scale and do that kind of thing. And now let's go bevel. Just grab this edge, and this edge. Let's do those first. Uh, and let's do this edge too. Control B, pull back, add maybe two segments. Let's grab uh, this edge here. Control B, one, two. And it's debatable if we want this edge as well. Let's not do that for now, but let's do one more thing down here. And let's grab this face and inset like that. E to extrude and pull it out to make that part that connects with the body. And this is what we have so far. Okay, so far so good. Let's go back in and let's now add, I think I'm gonna add two edge loops scale in the Y to pull them out like that okay and then I'm gonna select all these faces shift alt and click that whole row of faces and hit I twice I I and then just pull with your mouse till you get these regions like that all right make sure there's a bit of space in between them and they're not hitting the ends right there that's perfect right just like that and then um, where is my uh, mesh tools? That got closed for some reason. Extrude individual. I'm going to click that button and pull down. And that's going to push them out. I don't even go too far. Just maybe like that. And while they're still selected, Control B, pull back, and roll my mouse wheel up once. All right, that'll give me those kind of things. We can try smoothing, see what it looks like. All right. Um, and we can try adding you know edge loops if we want to try and you know clean that up if that's what we want that might be good enough it, i kind of think it is i'd rather save some polys than whatever so that's going to be like that let's just move it though a little bit out 
Okay, so we can, there's a bit of a distance from the bar. So here we are in front view, and let's uh, take this Shift D. Let's copy that over here. Shift D over to here. Shift D over to here. All right, so those would be my volume knobs. Cool. The next thing we're going to do is create a guitar input right here. My 3D cursor is there, that's fine. Shift A, circle, rotate X90, scale it down. I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to bring it up a little ways, just like that. All right, and that's going to be fine. All right, let's control A, rotation and scale, go into edit mode, F to make a face, E to extrude and bring it up a little bit. And I'm gonna inset to about here, E to extrude like that. Let's select it all and control N. Now I'm gonna be bringing um, a hexagonal bolt on top of this. So that's why I've gone up a little bit more of a distance than I normally would have. But anyway, select that face, I to inset, and E to extrude, but I'm not gonna go down too far. I'm just gonna do that for the moment. For the moment, like I always say, grab the sharp edges there and there, and let's bevel this thing. Uh, I don't need, uh, I don't know if I need to do the back, maybe I will. Not too much, one, two, just like that. Okay, uh, we can just smooth it later. Let's shift S cursor to selected. All right, so that 3D cursor is right on this object. And then go Shift A, bring in a cylinder, but switch this to six vertices right away and leave everything else. Edit mode, scale. All right, we also need to rotate our X90 and scale this in the Y. Like that, and then I'll bring it out. Just to get a sense, let's select it all and control in. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's gonna go there. Let's uh, control A, rotation and scale, and then shift alt and click that whole upper edge and control B and just pull back like that, about half the distance. And I'm gonna leave that one like that. Okay, cool. Um, I just wanna make sure that the face here is not, see so yeah, there I hit the, the bolt, so I just want it right there. I'm not gonna have a hole going into the amplifier, I'm just gonna color this black, so that's the way that's gonna go. Um, I can go ahead and join those together and try smoothing, and I can um, mess with the smoothing angle a little bit and see if that's gonna look all right. You know what I should do? Maybe, maybe. Let's just see if that's really helpful. It it kind of is what I want to want. I just find that uh, this just becomes lost. What I had here. So maybe I'll do that. You know, it's a small, small detail, but it's a small thing. But all right, so there's the guitar input. We'll just leave it there and see if that's a good spot for it. I need a button here that is like this one for, uh, I don't know, high and low gain or you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I got my 3D cursor there, that's fine. I'm gonna go sh Shift A, bring in a cube. Scale. And we'll scale that in the Y as well. And we'll bring it over. And we'll scale some more. I might just do it there. Scale in the Y though. Uh, I'm going to make the base of it. And then you'll see what I'm going to do. Okay, let's go back into object mode and set origin to geometry, even shift S cursor to select it, might as well. 
and let's go control a rotation and scale in case we needed that and an edge selection grab the vertical edges on this thing control b i don't need a lot of bevel just a little bit of rounding and let's go ahead and do this top as well and then we'll grab the face here let's look at the front and zoom in and go e to extrude scale in the x to pull in scale in the z to pull in and then uh, extrude it downwards to make a little indentation and then I'm going to use this piece to form the actual button so shift D and P to make a new object I'm going to select that and origin of geometry and then I'll pull it out so you can see I just copied that face made it a new object all right I'm going to go into edit mode and select it and I'm going to extrude downwards like that it looks all weird I just got to flip my normals control N and while we're here let's go control B and bevel this but not too much because we'll start getting some crossing that's fine and that's good actually I mean I should probably come in here and I'm not doing this though very much and delete that face is not needed you know this is just gonna sit in there like that as a button but one thing I would like to do now that I think about it is make it smaller scale in the X so it kind of seems like it fits into a hole I don't know if that'll be visible at all you know there's, there's a bit of a gap there we'll try it uh, let's smooth mm, let's um, not that one actually that one could uh, this one actually uh, add some edge loops here just add an edge loop like that it should help with the smoothing I could do one on the top as well no, I guess I can't. So I beveled that quite a bit. I'm just going to leave that. Let's look at this one, see if I need. I could pull one down anyhow. All right, and is that in far enough? Oh, yeah. So that would be that button there. And then I need um, I need some other things here. But while I'm at it, why not take this button? All right, shift D, pull it across here for the actual on off button, and then just, just manipulate it. So let's uh, hide that piece. Let's take that piece and go into edit mode, wireframe and vertex. And let's see if the ver vertical height is about the same, I think. If I just pull this down to make a nice big button area, and go back now I could I don't know if it'll, it won't be seen I don't think I could just select that face and go it's because of the smoothing and that'll get rid of that weirdness uh, let's go alt page and let's hide that again but get this thing front view do the same thing edit wireframe vertex grab these pull them down there in fact I might want to pull these down a little bit so there's more a little bit of space <clears throat> I was also thinking of just about this grabbing these let's just pull them up and take these and even pull them down how about that for a quick makeshift button you know that Okay, now, um, do I want to put that dot on that? I'm not sure. Uh, in the meantime, we need um, a headphone input, a couple of inputs, and then a power light uh, there. So um, my 3D cursor is there, which is the same height of, of all those things. So let's just do this. Shift A, add a circle, rotate X90, scale it down. And I want it smaller than the input, okay? So I need room actually. In fact, I'm gonna put it at a different height. No, I'm not, I'm not. 
and I can always move this button over. I'm going to make it even them even smaller. These are like mini plug connections in my mind. Control A, rotation to scale. Very simple. So let's just go into edit mode. I have to make a face. Eat extrude up like that. Inset like that. Come out a bit. Inset one more time. And we'll go in. And we'll just do it like that. Okay. And let's let's bevel what we can. Really small detail. Jeez. Control B. One, two. You know, back side. You want me to get to the back side? Do you? So maybe I will take these two and bring them close to there, awfully close to the end. And we'll do one more thing. Let's shift S cursor to selected. Shift A, circle, rotate X90, scale. But I'm going to put this up in this area. to make a face, E to extrude, um, inset a little bit, I don't know. E to go back down, let's scale in a little bit like this, and then uh, E to extrude up, uh, did I hit E, yeah, up like this, and B down like that and smooth. Well, actually, don't stop, forget about a little bit of beveling, and that'll help with that smoothing issue. Boy, that's fine. Cool. Now, I would like, <clears throat> if it was at all possible, to put a back face on this or to even copy. Let me see if I can grab, I don't know, uh, an edge that goes all the way around. I can, actually. What I was thinking is, let me just try this. Shift D, P. All right, origin of geometry. Um, pull it back just a tiny bit. A to select it all, F to make a face, E to extrude a little bit, just to give it something. And then let's see if I can push it up again, just again. Okay, I, it's inherited the subdivision surface. If I hide that for the moment, for the moment, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. Mm, good, 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 good. I wanted that. Alt H, you are going. <clears throat> All right, now. This is basically gonna be the instrument stuff now you could put text on this as well maybe I'll do that another time I'm not going to do it right now all right here we go folks let's try it um, I'm on two separate layers I've got my amp there and I got this stuff here A to select that and I'm gonna shift and click that first layer so I've got both layers selected but I've got this stuff I'm gonna pull it up Now, look at the side, and I'm going to start rotating this in the X. 
And then at some point, like now, I'm going to switch to normal. And that's going to enable, make it a little bit easier for positioning this. I'm going to rotate in the X. Again, I'm going to hold Shift to go in smaller increments. And I'm going to work on positioning this. That's all right. I can slide it up nice and straight. See if I can get this to touch down. That's the size and the positioning. So I've got a little bit of space that's not bad. It's not bad. Now, is it going to be possible for me to even tell when it's making contact? <coughs> I'm going to deselect, but it's not a problem because I can just reselect from the other layer. And that's what I got so far. And that's most of it because really after this is just materials. And for now, I might just be doing something really simple. So I could start setting that up, and I, I think I will. Um, let's go over to the materials tab and press new. And I just don't know if I want to go all the way with this or, or what. Um, I could go for mix shader here. And for the first shader, choose diffuse and dark. I don't need it to be too black though, or else it's gonna be hard to see. And for the next shader, glossy. And for that one, you know, maybe it will go darker. And uh, I want to view it in the viewport as well, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and click that black. And it's just a thing that I, w I had selected. I, I do want that there. I'm going to call this um, cabinet black. And I'm going to start selecting things that I want to have to be cabinet black, which is a lot of stuff. And it'll start getting hard to see. OK. Um, this piece, let me hide that, okay, and unhide that. I want this piece to be cabinet black, like that. And I want most of, of, of the items, including the, the grill and the, and the well, um, yeah, well, let's just go ahead. We'll do the grill. I, I think I'm going to start it uh, as that color, and I'll work on those. Um, uh, there are more colors coming, but for the moment, let's do this. So I'm just selecting all my volume controls and doing that. And um, all right, let's go ahead and make another material. And we'll do it a mixed shader. So we can, we can mess around in the node editor. Uh, diffuse. Now, <clears throat> I want a metal. And I know real metal should be just glossy, but this is not a real metal, all right? I want it to be sort of a plasticky metal. And so I'm going to, to do this for now. Um, all right, oh, and uh, let's, um, let's go back to, to, uh, to this. And uh, I'm just gonna select that, but let's call this uh, silver. I don't know, could have called it metal or whatever. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into each volume knob and in face selection, but I can come back to global. I'm gonna select that face and assign that silver to it, just like that. Okay, press the plus, uh, silver and assign. Now I could have done this on one and then copied it over. But um, hey, we're doing it this way. All right, so that's my volume controls. This 
I'm going to do this as silver. It probably wouldn't be silver, but that is cabinet black. And what I think I want to do for these is I, I think they are black, but I, I'm going to try silver there and then cabinet black for the inside. So it kind of looks like it goes into the amp, you know, and I'll repeat that here. And if I want, I can change these. Silver. Let's start. No, that's going to be different. Okay, so come in here. And just for the inset there, we'll use the black. And we'll see if we like this or not. What's going on? What am I? Am I in something? Oh, this. Oh. Okay, so far so good. Let's do these as uh, silver. But let's do the screws as in black. All right, so we're going to do some with the speakers in a moment. Let's get these in cabinet black. Now, really, I could be doing a texture on these on the, on on the cabinet instead of this, and then we'll see. Did I get silver on that? You know what? I'm not sure if I have to. Assign it that way, or if I got it, it looks looks too white to me. That's probably fine. Let's hide the grill and come into these. And what I think I want to do is cabinet black, but I want I don't know if this is gonna look any good, but like this much I think as silver. I'm just gonna try it and see if I like it. You know, just so that it's visible through the grill. What's that? Uh, let's do both of them. Uh, control plus till they get down to there, but less than that, just to there. So I mean, you can almost barely there. You can sort of see the speaker, you know, but it goes like that. So let's just. Oh yeah, there is one more thing I gotta do. Let's make one more, and we'll, I guess we'll make it a mix shader. Diffuse red, somewhat dark, and glossy, that red, but light. And viewport is, is that, let's say. And that's, you know, obviously just red. <laughs> red. Okay, so let's go into this button. Zoom in. And select it all. And I will put um, cabinet block. And then I'll select the this part. Control plus down. I'm not sure how far, so I'm going to try that and we'll grab the red and assign and we'll see if that's too far I think so let's shift alt and click that we'll try and see I, mean, I can adjust the model if I have to I think that's okay like that No, let's not select that. I want to bring in a plane for ground flow. Let's select the feet. Shift S cursor to select it. Put my 3D cursor down there. Shift A, mesh, plane, uh, scale 8. All right. And uh, I mean, that's basically what I was going for, um, aside from texture, from texturing, but I really wanted to focus on the modeling here. So um, I'm going to leave it at that for the time being. 
and we can come back perhaps and look at some texture. I just want to find a nice uh, vantage point that looks good for us. Let's actually, uh, yeah, let's try that. And let's see if we get some, yeah, we can see that. It looks like a little toy amp with a tiny bit of sh uh, shadows from the ambient, uh, ambient uh, occlusion. So let's get into a position and let's bring up the size of the render. That's fine. There's nothing else I can do as far as I know. You know, so I can use that as as a as a thumbnail for now. All right. Well, that's how to model that. Thanks for watching.